Hey Team YouTube, so what do you do if you have a neighbor that puts a pressure washer on the curb? It's a 3000 PSI model, Troy built, with a 190cc uh, small uh, gasoline engine on it. Um, you try to make it run. I thought originally it was um, overfilled with oil, which it was literally the entire crankcase was filled with oil. Didn't have the heart to tell my neighbor. I thought that was the reason for the hard starting, go to try it out. And that's not it. That's part of it what it was. But the other part was, here's the existing pump. It was an unloader valve. And the unloader valve was very, very stuck. Uh, heat soaking in vinegar. Um, all sorts of, uh, you know, persuaders, uh, mechanical persuader devices. And it would not budge. So I'll just buy a new pressure washer pump online, on eBay or something like that. Well, challenge is, this style of pump here uh, isn't exactly the most common anymore. Um, but, so what are my conditions for finding a good pump online to make this work? Well, let's look under the pressure washer real quick. So, this Briggs motor has a 7 8 shaft. It's a vertical pressure washer and it's front facing. It makes sense to be front facing, you could make it rear facing too, but Eh. And then it has the standard type of uh, keyway. So, you know, me being smart, I'm going to go online and I'm going to find a 7 8 keyway vertical pump front facing fittings pump. Let's see what we got. So, Team YouTube, the vast bulk of vertical pressure washer pumps online that are inexpensive are of this style. They have the three ears that would use the uh, engine bolts. And here is the, the, uh, the bolt that bolts onto the frame of the pressure wire that goes up through the motor. Obviously there are three. Uh, the uh, bore, the 7 8 bore, right size keyway. Everything is great except for one thing. And that is, if you go here and you say, well, how much shaft goes into there? Or how much shaft can go into there? You're looking at, you know, what, a couple inches. Over here, you're looking at oh, 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 a lot less. So, good old me was a little bit flummoxed by this development. Fortunately, if rather than returning it to the eBay seller, who was selling this as a new other because it was a return for uh, actually uh, what, 55 bucks after tax shipping and everything, um, I didn't want to return it. So I thought, aha, I have a plan. What is that plan? The plan is we're going to use some, these are called coupling nuts, and you can get them in a pack at Home Depot. Unfortunately, I could not find them at my preferred store in Menards. All the rest of the hardware came from Menards. Of course, I bought all this as usual with the, my own money because I just can't stay away from projects. So I just can't stand the idea of people throwing stuff away. So let's look under the washer here real quick. So Team YouTube, this is all 3 8 coarse hardware. Um, what I did is I cut some 3 and a half inch long pieces of threaded rod. Um, I put a, a lock washer in and then I put on those um, spacers, the coupling nuts. And then we're going to go ahead and of course I tried it first to make sure this was enough length. I didn't want a stack of, you know, 25 washers to accomplish the same goal. I thought I'd rather have something a little more elegant. So I invested about 15 bucks or so in in hardware. That includes a two foot piece of threaded rod and all of the fasteners you see here. So I'm gonna go ahead and bolt it together off camera and then we're gonna give it a shot and see if this all works. Hey Team YouTube, okay here we are. There's the pressure washer pump with the hose supply hooked up and the um, hose delivery to the pressure washer gun hooked up. Okay, here's the stack that I used. I put a lock washer up next to the steel pan. There's the motor, of course. And then one of those uh, spacers. And the pump ear. And then a flat washer. And then a nylon locking nut there on the bottom. Three and a half inches for the uh, cutting the threaded rod is just about perfect. You got about a you know thread to a couple of threads exposed and uh, Looking here at the shaft the shaft comes out of the motor and then here's the the pump Of course, I double checked to make sure that I wasn't you know ramming the shaft into the 
uh, pump blind hole that um, with this spacer here, you know, that when you move the pump up, it could still move up. So I wasn't, you know, you know, bottoming, you know, like, you know, bottoming the shaft into, into the pump. Ran it for a few minutes. Heck, we could try it right now here, Team YouTube. Let me see if I can get my butt off the ground and we'll see if we can run a sample. Hey, Team YouTube. This, uh, this Briggs motor is pretty simple. Um, it just has the throttle control here. You just put it all the way up to start. There's no, oh, there, well, there is a primer bulb. <laughs> let's just make sure we got a little bit of primer bulb. And let's go ahead and give it a ring here and see what happens. That is a wrap. So hopefully that solution will be a good long-term solution and that the run out of the shaft, uh, motor shaft, won't otherwise damage or influence the, the, the pump seals. But uh, right now I think if this thing would fail, it would fail right away. So uh, yeah, uh, comments welcome if people think this is a good solution or not. I'm just curious. Have a great day Team YouTube.